Our brains are fantastic processors. They are generally only interested in change. They're such incredible processors that our eyes have to vibrate like this to see at all. If our eyes stop vibrating, we become blind because the brain turns off when everything is the same. So if we smelt this for long enough, what would happen? Nothing. The brain says, this is like my body odor. I'm not interested in my body odor. <laughs> yeah, and turns off. <laughs> yeah? We, 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 don't, we don't notice ourselves first. Yeah? The same with this. If we smell this about 20 times, what will happen is we turn off to this smell. So, this is the classical top note, middle note, bottom note triangle. The idea is that the light notes, lemon and orange, are in the top note, the floral notes are in the middle, and on the bottom we have uh, woods, uh, musk, and things like that. Now, you've had this smelling strip for about 30 minutes. So what's been happening to these, these molecules? They've been evaporating. So what's been happening is one minute, two minutes, three minutes, yeah? Okay, so those top notes have disappeared. If we smelt this 20 times, or until it just disappeared, our brain says, not interested in that smell anymore, yeah, it doesn't change. What would happen when we smelt this one? The same perfume, but we just dipped it. This is the same perfume, so these are the two same perfume, that one was dipped 30 minutes ago, this one was... Well, all we do, do is we become blind to the bottom. Yeah? So, all of that, the brain is not interested in. Boring! Yeah? And all it smells is the top note. So, this requires... Ryan's going to give you a smelling strip. Do not smell it. Do not smell it yet. Yeah? Hold the first smelling strip in your hand, the first one. Blue dot. Keep number, th keep the blue dot one, the number two one, close so you can pick it up very quickly. All right, but don't smell it. Okay, so with your first sample, I want you to smell it at least 20 times or until, don't do it just yet, yeah, let, me, let me run through it quickly. What you're going to do is, number, the first one you're going to smell like this. Not yet. Smell becoming weaker. Smell gone. Pick up the blue dot and smell that. And you've got a five second gap before your brain switches on again and realizes it's being tricked. Yeah? And then try that. So smell until you can't smell it. Keep the other one as soon as as soon as it disappears or it becomes very weak, pick up the other one and then smell. But your brain has to be ready for it. It's further apart, yeah.
Don't breathe out your mouth. I don't want to see your chest going up and down. And then quickly try to, try to make a note of what you smell, what the differences are. Your, stu your brain is stubborn. <laughs> it might be because you're, you've got a little bit of a gap there. Keep it. Yeah. Now smell the other one. Completely different. Well, it is. It is actually completely different. Because that perfume is those ingredients. Uh, no, no, you're not getting it. You're, these are the, when you smell it like that, none of this is here. You're blind to this, yeah? All you've got is that, yeah. What did you get? What smells did you get? Yeah. What? Same perfume. It's not. It's, all it is, is it's two parts of the same perfume. It's like... That's, the, that's that part with no top note. This is top note only. Because your brain, your brain is, is now asleep for this. Not interested. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's right, because Ylang Ylang's top notes are slightly different from Jasmine, so you can, yeah. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, imagine that if you, if you dipped your sample every half an hour, what you could do is actually cut your segments of your perfume down into little pieces. Yeah. Perfumers, perfumers have used this for, for many years, um, I mean, I, the, f the first perfumer I worked for, Ken Burrows, taught me this technique, but it had no name. So I gave it a name, yeah. <laughs> so I call it inducing temporary selective Odor fatigue. So inducing to make it happen. Temporary, yeah, just for a short time. Selective to those materials. And odor fatigue, yeah. So we, we deliberately induce odor fatigue so that we can smell other ingredients. And if you were matching a, a perfume, copying a, somebody's perfume and you had 80% of the formula, if you do this technique, you only have to worry about the 20% that's left because you can block them out and then smell the, the copy one and the real one. Does that make sense? If you're copying a perfume, let's say you, you knew it had jasmine and ylang and musk in there and you mix those ones together, you get rid of that, and then you you and then you start pulling, pulling the cardigan apart. You know, unthreading it. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Yeah, it gets harder and harder. Even, even if you've got GCMS and other, other things to help you, it's still harder because there's something I was talking with you earlier about once you mix a perfume together, you mix two ingredients, after an hour you've actually got maybe four ingredients because they're reacting together. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry? Coke. Well, they have, haven't they? They've tried. 